Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. Our swordsman of the crew, Roano Zoro, is one of the straw hats that managed to evolve the most during the Wano arc, getting a new sword, new techniques, and even a much bigger bounty after the end of this arc. So in today's video, we're going to talk about his great breakthrough that happened during the Wano arc, how powerful Zoro managed to become, in what ways he managed to achieve it, and how he can evolve further in the future of the work. But before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel or even even if you've watched a bunch of our videos, we'd be absolutely honored if you'd leave us a like or even subscribe and maybe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out and motivates us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing this video or your favorite with a friend. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So my friends, as we know, the Straw Hats have been sailing for quite a long time in search of the One Piece treasure. And throughout their journey, many of the Straw Hats have grown and evolved their abilities. But the Straw Hat who is currently standing out the most, aside from Luffy, of course, is Zoro for his incredible evolutionary capacity that's been shown over time, and especially during this Wano arc, where he's been shown that he's been capable of incredible feats. And it seems Zoro's accomplishments were so great that his bounty is finally maybe reflecting his skill level. You see, his former bounty was 320 million, and is now 1.111 billion, making him the second highest bounty straw hat, second only to his captain, who is now a Yonko. During the Wano arc, Zoro also managed to get a new sword. You see, he had had Shusui for for quite a long time since the thriller Bark arc, but when it turned out to be a national treasure of Wano, he needed to give it back to the country, and in return, he obtained Edma, one of the 21 great swords that have ever been forged in the world of One Piece. Now, this sword was created by the blacksmith Shimotsuki Kozaburo in the land of Wano. Now, Kazuki Hiyori was responsible for giving this sword to Zoro, making the swordsman all the more powerful with this new tool. Enma is also among one of the best swords in the world. Even Kazuki Sukiyaki described Enma as being able to cut to the bottom of the underworld drawing a parallel with its twin sword, the Ame no Habakiri, said to be able to cut the sky itself. Even Kozoburo, the forger of the sword, himself considered Enma his best masterpiece compared to all the other creations, including the Waruichi Monji. After Zoro obtained Enma, he was able to show several distinctive features that this sword alone possesses, such as the ability to release the armament hockey of its bearer, allowing Zoro to cut more than he ever intended, and Enma can even extend the cut, making it a much more powerful action in combat. By wielding, Zoro was even been able to cut off a cliff with extremely great ease, although he intended just to cut a tree. But because Enma started pulling Zoro's hockey out, making his arm weaker, it took away his accuracy temporarily. However, thanks to the mastery of hockey that Zoro does have, it allowed him to take his hockey back from the sword, something that even Sukiyaki praised him for, noting that a normal swordsman would have had all their hockey drained by the sword, becoming just an empty shell. Zoro even managed to become so powerful using this sword that during the Battle of Nogashima, Kai Kaido felt a strange sensation emanating for Enma, producing a flame-like aura whenever Zoro started to release his power. Even Big Mom was worried about this sword from Zoro, and she even warned Kaido to dodge the attacks of that sword, showing that even the emperors fear the great power of Enma, even though it's a lower grade sword than that of Yoru or Basento. With this sword, Zoro was able to wound Kaido in dragon form, leaving a permanent scar on him in human dragon form, and then also was able to do significant damage and defeat a Lunarian, as we know as King. On top of that, according to Sukiyaki, if Zoro were ever to make Enma a permanent black blade, it would increase its grade, suggesting that this sword could even become a supreme great sword, just like Yoru and some of the others we've seen. During their confrontation against the Yonko, Zoro demonstrated incredibly great feats using this new sword. And at one point during the fight on top of Onigashima, Kaido transformed into his dragon state, and Zoro then unleashed a powerful flying strike from Enma towards Kaido. But the strike failed, and then he proceeded to be hit by Zeus's lightning. And upon seeing that Luffy's Gear 4 had ran out, Kaido created several tornadoes that pulled Luffy away from Zoro, and then the Yonko trapped Luffy inside his mouth. So Zoro had to respond by unleashing an attack that successfully cut through Kaido's scales and forced him to release Luffy. Once Law, Kid, and Zoro managed to separate Big Mom from Kaido, Kaido moved to attack Zoro first, forcing the swordsman to activate his nine sword style Ashura attack for the first time in many years. Zoro unleashed a powerful attack at Kaido that successfully inflicted a large gash on the Emperor's chest. And Kaido noted that in the shock that Zoro had used Conqueror's Hockey in the attack as well, which kind of confused Zoro because he didn't know he actually was a possessor of Conqueror's Hockey. Initially, Zoro was disappointed that he didn't take down the Emperor, but Kaido still praised him, saying that the cut would leave a scar. 
but then Kaido defeated Zoro and Law with his lightning attacks. But when they fell to the ground, Luffy was able to get up and started fighting Kaido equally, allowing Zoro and Law to leave the fight to recover. After Law takes Zoro to Chopper, who healed some of his injuries from the previous fight, Zoro and Sanji teamed up to fight against King and Queen. Now Zoro goes after King with his three sword style, Rengoku Onigiri, while Sanji hits Queens with his Diable Mutant shot. Realizing that the fight would be problematic if King and Queen were to stay together, Zoro and Sanji split them up to fight them individually, something that they could do much easier, so Zoro finally managed to fight King alone. But once Zoro started to fight King on his own, as Zoro's preparing to attack him, he was stunned that King's sword was able to catch and pull away his own sword, sending them flying away as King tried to punch Zoro with his spiked gloves. However, Zoro was still able to stop King's punch with his third sword in his mouth, and was able to quickly retrieve his swords and then commented on the way that King used his own weapons, stating that King was not a traditional swordsman. And after King replied that one should not be limited to one way of fighting, this gave Zoro something to think about. Also, during Zoro's long battle with King, his sword seemed to no longer be obeying him because Zoro was exhausted. So Enma was consuming all his hockey, leaving his arm weakened and without strength. Seeing how this could end up turning into a huge disadvantage, Zoro demanded that Enma stop consuming so much hockey from his body. But King, not caring what was happening to Zoro, just kept on attacking. Zoro decides to aim his sword straight at King's chest, aiming to hurt King even if he took an attack from King in return. But before receiving the attack, Zoro quickly cuts King, or at least that's what we thought. But after making his move, we see that a big explosion of flames covers Zoro because of King's last attack. Now, Zoro manages to survive the attack using his armament hockey, but he can't can't believe how or why King is unarmed after such a quick attack. So he begins to analyze King's actions so that Zoro can find his opponent's weaknesses. As Zoro attacks King again with his one sword style, Ie Shi 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 Son Son, but once again King is unharmed. And King apparently had an almost Kaido like defense, which made it almost impossible for Zoro to hurt him with a sword. And because he was weakened from his previous battle with Kaido, this was keeping Zoro from fighting King at his full strength, which made his sword strokes all the weaker than usual. But even so, Zoro Zoro persevered and kept fighting King. As King comes back in with his swords and Zoro prepares to block, Enma once again begins to drain Haki from Zoro. And because he's weakened, Zoro could not defend against King's attack, but still manages to quickly dodge it, making King's attack hit him lightly and preventing Zoro from suffering an even greater injury. As the part of Onigashima that they're battling on starts to get destabilized because of King's previous attack, Zoro ends up losing his Sendai Kitetsu, but is able to quickly throw himself towards his sword to retrieve it. King also moves towards Zoro and kicks him back onto Onigashima, preventing Zoro from falling, and then criticizes Zoro, saying that he's crazy for risking his life for something as simple as a sword. We next see Zoro stand up to see that the Wadu Ichimanji had not fallen, thinking gratefully of when he picked up that sword and began to look back on everything he'd learned in Wano and also his childhood in Somotsuki Village, and immediately noticed that all these connections and realized that Enma had been testing him all along. Next, we see several beast pirates arrive and try to interfere with Zoro's fight against King, but we also see that all the pirates present started to faint, and we see that again, Zoro is using his Conqueror's Hockey, but this time, he was finally aware of what he was doing. As the battle between King and Zoro then continues, Zoro starts to find and figure out how King's defense and speed works at the power of his Devil Fruit. And after much analysis from this battle with King, Zoro finally figures out a way to be able to win. You see, Zoro discovers that when King puts out the flames on his back of his head to increase his speed, his defenses get weaker, which meant that Zoro would only need to resist King while he was fast and then Zoro could land a blow on him. So then all Zoro had to do was wait for the right moment and ended up wounding King, managing to hit him with a sharp blow, a cut in which he managed to tear off part of the mask that covered his face and finally revealing his true identity. Once Zoro was able to land this attack, he then realized that King was now starting to become afraid of his attacks because he had figured out his secret. So King tried to finish him off with a huge flame dragon hotter than magma, but Zoro was not bothered by this and instead used his Eno Centauriu, Ipyaku Sanjo Hiryu, Jigoku, which means King of Hell, Three Sword Dragon, 103 Emotions, Flying Dragon Samurai Extreme. And with this attack, not only did he slice the Fire Dragon in two and defeat it, he also simultaneously cut off half the Lunarian's right wing. So after everything that Zoro did in supporting the battle at Onigashima, he saw one of the biggest boosts in any bounty that we saw among the Straw Hats, becoming, of course, the member with the second highest reward. And even Jinbei, who is an extremely powerful fighter and been on the seas much longer longer than any of the rest of the Straw Hats, he still is got a lower bounty than Zoro. Now, although it's still a little bit unclear exactly how bounties, or at least bounty levels are determined, this still demonstrates that Zoro is becoming extremely powerful. 
but we still don't think his strength is quite up to Mihawk Shed because his reward isn't even close to that of the world's greatest swordsman. So as we head into this final saga, in these next arcs, we're still gonna get a chance to see Zoro evolve even more so that he can finally confront his great rival and finally obtain the title of greatest swordsman in the world. But we still have a few other questions left over from this battle in Wano. In fact, there are hints and doubts that were left about Zoro. For instance, we saw that he fainted after his fight against Kaido. And in his dream, he saw Shinigami or kind of a reaper coming after him, but nothing seemed to happen. We, we don't know who it was. We don't know if it was really death or if it was perhaps an incarnation of Enma. And in addition to that, the information given that Enma will be able to evolve and become as strong as Mihawk's Yoryu, this will give Zoro that opportunity to turn a blade into a permanent black blade and make one of his swords one of the most powerful swords in the world of One Piece. And it may be that moment that shows us that Zoro is finally ready to take on the world's greatest swordsman. But with all that said, we'd now love to know what you think about it. What do you think is gonna be the next level of growth for Zoro? And what is your take on the dream where he saw that reaper, that cloaked skeletal figure? Do you think it was death and Zoro just refused to go? Or do you think it was Enma? And finally, when do you think we'll see this final matchup between Mihawk and Zoro? I mean, we know that Mihawk is now part of the Cross Guild and working with Crocodile and Buggy. So when do you think the next opportunity will happen? Let us know what you think in the comments below. So as we bring our video to a close, I want to thank you all so much for watching all the way up to the very end. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, give us a like or hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. Really hope to see you all in our next video, and let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.